वेलकम टू बायो वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट एड First aid is the first and immediate assistance given to any person suffering from either a minor or seriously illness or injury with care provided to preserve life prevent the condition from worsening or to promote recovery so the immediate assistance given to any person who had suffered from any injury or illness is termed as first aid it helped to preserve the life prevent the condition from worsening or to promote a recover here you can see some of the common things that we kept inside the first aid box they are bandages here you can see bandages then gauze rolls and pads then instant cold pack elastic bandages emergency blankets antiseptic wipes triangular bandages safety pins thermometer first aid manuals adhesive tapes gloves emergency contact information or medical information for family members then twe tweezers scissors all these are some of the common things that we kept inside the first aid box so it is necessary to keep the first aid kit in your home as well as any institutions So let's see the first aid for fracture. After the fracture or injury, prevent unnecessary movements. So try to maintain the patient still and composed. Don't move them unless it is necessary to avoid further injury. After that, we can check for other injuries. Examine the patient thoroughly for other injuries. and call for medical help please hand over the patient for further treatment to medical help team then stop bleeding apply pressure to the wound with a sterile bandage and clean cloth or a clean piece of clothing afterwards immobilize the injured area don't try to relain the bone or push the bone that is sticking out back in or apply a splint or sling to the area above in order to uh, immobilize the injured part last one apply ice packs ice packs can reduce pain and swelling and do not directly apply this on the skin wrap the ice in a towel and gently place it over the fractured site next one is the first aid for burns we usually have small burns at home and our day to day life so what will we do in order to prevent the further complications caused by the burns cool the burn that is 10 to 20 minutes wash in running water then cover with a loose sterile dressing seek medical advice monitor for shock and hypo thermia and what we have not to do during these times use of butter toothpaste worsen the burning part use ice to cool the burn remove clothing stuck to the burn bursting of blisters all these will worsen the burn next one first aid for drowning remove the victim from water clean the mouth from sands and other foreign bodies put him on the floor and raise his body and start cpr we will see what is cpr later call for medical help so let's see what is cpr 
CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR it is a life saving technique useful in many emergencies including a heart attack or near drowning in which someone's breathing or heartbeat has stopped so it is a part of first aid and make sure that those who are doing the first aid have enough practice while handling such situation next one first aid for nose bleeding sit in a chair and lean the head forward this will prevent any blood from going down back of the throat pinch the soft part of the nose direct pressure to control the bleeding for 5 to 10 minutes ice pack on the top of nose and cheek helps to control bleeding swelling and pain and what are the don'ts lie down or tilt your head back it may cause choking nausea or vomiting then pick or blow your nose this could only cause more bleeding take an aspirin this could only cause more bleeding because aspirin is a blood thinner so please understand the do's and don'ts while nose bleeding next one first aid for snake bite immobilize the affected limb apply the basic first aid that is wash the wound with soap and water and what are the don'ts take the patient to their tantrum or a snake charmer for treatment you don't have much scientific knowledge about the treatment sucking the wound from the injured part cut the wound open all these cannot uh, do while because it will worsen the situation first aid for insect bite or stings remove any stingers it is stuck in our muscle or in the skin wash the bite or sting side apply ice or cold compresses treat serious reactions the same as snake bite monitor breathing be alert to allergic reactions look for medic alert tag or emergency insect bite treatment kits on casualty so you can also use calamine lotions for instant uh, relief from the inflammation first aid for burns we have already discussed what we have to do during the burns the best treatment is 20 minutes treat the burn with cool running water so normal running water should be applied for uh, at least 20 minutes in order to avoid blisters which is caused by burning the next topic we are going to discuss is very important one that is blood transfusion as you know blood is one of the most important fluid in our system just recall the components in blood the blood consists of liquid part as well as the solid part the solid part comprises different types of cells they are RBC red blood cells WBC which are differ in structure as well as function they are isnophils monocyte neutrophil basophil and lymphocyte the third type of blood cell is platelets so blood is composed of different types of blood cells and the liquid part is called plasma so here you can see each components in detail the liquid part is the plasma and the components include RBC WBC and platelets it was Karl Landsteiner who distinguished the main blood groups in 1900. He was an Austrian biologist, physician and immunologist. 
now let's see what is grouping of blood blood can be grouped into different categories based on the presence or absence of various components the two major components in the blood which helps in categorizing into various groups are antigens and antibody so let's see what is an antigen blood group antigens are found on the surface of rbc they are of different types more than 30 types of antigens are existing in human blood the most common among them are antigen a antigen b antigen d and h antigens may be proteins carbohydrates glycolipids and so on rh factor is also called as rhesus factor it is a type of protein found on the outside of rbc this is called d antigen so what do you mean by antigen antigens are seen on the surface of rbc they may be either protein carbohydrate glycolipids etc the antigen d is also known as rh factor or rhesus factor which determines whether the blood group is positive or negative here you can see the rh factor and the difference between positive and negative factor the positive factor have rh factor the negative they lack the rh factor so positive blood groups are having rh factor and negative blood group have no rh factor at all it was first discovered in rhesus monkey that's why the name rh factor it is also expressed as d factor plasma in blood along with water salt and enzymes plasma also contain important components these include antibodies clotting factors and proteins albumin and fibrinogen when you donate blood healthcare providers can separate these vital parts from your plasma the plasma contain one important component known as antibodies the major antibodies present in blood plasma are anti a and anti b based on the presence or absence of various antigen and antibody there are different types of blood group identified in human population so different types of blood groups are identified among human population the most common group is abo blood group so here you can see the different types coming under abo blood group o negative and o positive o negative lacks the rh factor here you can see the difference between o positive and o negative o positive have this rh factor next one blood group a both positive and negative a group having a antigen positive having one more antigen along with a that is rh factor b is having another type of antigen b antigen if it is negative they lacks the rh factor if it is positive they have this particular rh factor and the last category ab blood group they have two types of antigen together a and b when coming to ab positive they are having the rs factor in addition to a and b so this is a good illustration which help you to understand 
the difference between positive negative and various types of blood group antigens and antibodies in blood so this is a simple table showing the presence or absence of antigen and antibodies in various blood groups the various antigen present in the following groups are antigen a present in blood group a antigen b in blood group b in ab blood group both a and b are present but in antigen are absent in o group when coming to the antibodies a group contain antibody b b group containing antibody a ab group have no antibody test at all and last category o blood group have both the antibodies so here you can see the compatibility of the donor and recipient now let's get familiarized with some rare blood group bombay blood group the bombay blood group is a group which is rare among human population this group lacks h antigen on rbc and have anti h in the serum that is antibody for this reason people who have bombay phenotype can donate red blood cells to any member of abo group system unless rh is incompatible but they cannot receive blood from any member of abo blood group system the another interesting blood group is golden blood it is the rarest type of blood group since 1961 only about 43 people claim to have this type of blood group currently there are only 9 active golden blood donors are there it is also known as rh null blood group moving to the next topic blood transfusion blood transfusion is the process of transferring blood or blood products into one circulation intravenously intravenously means through veins transfusions are used for various medical conditions to replace lost components of the blood so as we have discussed earlier donors and recipients should have a compatible blood group then only we can do the blood transfusion donate blood save life who can donate blood people in the age group 18 to 60 can donate blood blood donation can be done once in 3 months blood donation causes no problem to the donor's health pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers should not donate their blood person with communicable diseases should not donate blood so these are the points that we have to keep in mind while donating the blood so here this is a simple table showing the relationship between blood types and antibody so as we have discussed earlier the major blood types are a group b group ab group and o in a blood group the antigens are a in b blood group the antigen is b in ab blood group both the antigens are present but in o blood group there is no antigens at all what about antibodies antibodies are present in the serum that is in plasma a blood group is having antibody b that is the opposite letter so you can easily remember or recollect in that way b blood group is having antibody a 
AB is having no antibody at all. O blood group is having both the antibodies A and B. Then who can donate? A can donate blood to A and AB. B can donate blood to B and AB. AB can donate blood only to AB groups. And O can donate blood to A, B, AB and O. Coming to recipients. Who can receive blood from? A can receive blood from A as well as O. B groups can receive blood from B group and O group. AB can receive blood from AB and O. And O can receive blood only from O. So children, one thing we have to keep in mind that the RH factor is also there that also should consider while doing the blood transfusion. Everyone cannot receive blood from all groups. Why is it so? In the previous tables we come across that all the groups cannot transfuse the blood among each other. Why is it so? Because of the reaction between antigen and antibody. Antigens should not react with antibody. What happens if they react together? It result in clotting. So let's see. When a foreign antigen reaches one's blood, it stimulates a defense mechanism. On receiving unmatching blood, the antigen present in the donor's blood and the antibody present in the recipient's blood will react with each other and form a blood clot. Hence, everyone cannot receive blood and from all blood groups. The next topic we are going to discuss is defense mechanism in plants. Like human beings, plants also have a well-defined efficient active defense mechanism in its system. Certain examples are thorns which is acting as a powerful defense from the attack of animals, germs etc. Waxy coating or cuticle which is acting as a waterproof or thick layer over the parts of the plant especially on the leaf bark secretions like resins gum latex all these provide protection from the entry of germs apart from all these as you know plant cell is a highly modified cell it is composed of different organelles, cell membrane and powerful fort called cell wall. So the cell wall prevents the entry of germs towards the inner part of the cell. So let's summarize the defense mechanism in plants. The plants have waxy covering or cuticle. It prevents the entry of germs through leaves. The bark which protects the inner cells from direct contact of pathogen. The cell wall acting as a well equipped resistant coat. Callus present in the cell wall acting it's a type of polysaccharide prevents the entry of germs. In addition to callos, there are other substances like lignin, suberin, cutin also provide protection to the cell wall which prevents the entry of germs. So four major mechanism which helps to defend the entry of germs in plants are wax covering and cuticle callus, cell wall and bark. So here I am winding up. Thank you.